Today I'm here with my May wrap up for 2019. I'm splitting it into two parts because I read 10 books this month. So part one is going to be the first five and then part two will be the last five that I read for the month. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I read is a graphic novel. It's called Vincent Book 2 Heartbreaks and Parties 101. This is by Vitter Kafagi. Like the title suggests, it is the second book in a series. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 on Goodreads, which is what I gave the first book as well. So this is based off of a comic strip that's found in a newspaper in some far off country. I want to say New Zealand. Sweden, something like that. I can't quite remember. But it follows Vincent who is trying to navigate his love life while hanging out with his best friend Bo and other RPG playing friends. All of the characters are animals and it's just a really cute, fun, light-hearted comic strip. I just really like Vincent as a character. He's very awkward. He's in his freshman year of college. His inner dialogue is just hilarious. You can tell that he's just like this awkward little bean trying to navigate life and it's just so much fun to read. I definitely recommend checking it out if you want something super quick. I got my copy on NetGalley so it might still be up there but it's super cute, lots of fun, easy, fast. Now on to the physical books that I read. The first was The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It's set in the year 2118 when this a thousandth floor building is built. The higher floor you live on in this tower determines how wealthy your family is seen. In this book we follow five teenagers who all live on different levels. Lita Cole turns to drugs after a very distressing situation involving a boy that she never should have loved. Aristod Radson's life is falling apart after a family secret is revealed. Rylan Myers is trying not to fall for a boy she shouldn't love. Wat Bracrati is a tech genius who does hacking jobs on the side to try to earn a little bit of extra cash. And then Avery Fuller lives on the thousandth floor, but she's hiding a very big secret that might ruin her perfect life. So I'm not gonna lie, the first couple of chapters of this book had me thinking I was not gonna be a fan since there is an incest storyline, which I don't enjoy. But I was like, we'll follow the book so that we can get the rest of the stories of these five teenagers. Maybe it'll be okay. I think that this book was so bad that it made it good, if that makes any sense. I love how it started with the death of a character and then started from like months prior leading up to that death and then we finally got to figure out who actually died. I am a bit bitter about who the death was because they were the best character out of everybody in my opinion. I'm personally a fan of multiple point of view so I didn't have a problem with following five different characters at once. Eris was my favorite of the five. I think that her character development was definitely the best out of all of them. I also really liked Watt as a character. I think that he was very interesting to read about and I liked the concept of Nadia which kind of leads me to my next point. I really liked the tech in this world and how like futuristic it was. I thought it was really cool. I loved the contacts that the characters had that they could like communicate with each other. It was basically like a smartphone in your eyeball. I thought it was really sick. I would love one of those. I liked Rylan but some of her decisions I was not a fan of. I didn't like how she dealt with Cord and Hero. Not a fan. Avery. She made me uncomfortable and Lita can choke. That's basically where I'm going with this book but Four out of five stars. I mean, it was an entertaining read and I do want to pick up the next book just to see where all the characters go to because we were left on a big cliffhanger. So I want to know what happens. The next book that I read is The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of five stars, which I'm kind of disappointed about because everybody says this is like the most incredible series ever. They're like huge fans of it, but I just didn't like it. People do say that it gets better in the second and third book, so I'm hoping that I enjoy those a lot more. This basically follows Neil Johnson who has been on the run from his father for the past eight years. The one thing he finds solace in is a game called Exe, which is basically a cross between soccer and lacrosse. He is approached by Wymick, who is the head coach of the Palamento State Fox team. 
and he's asked to play on his team of misfits. Neil initially refuses to join the team because of Kevin Day, who is an exe superstar who has a very troubling past that involves Neil. Eventually, Neil decides that he can't stay away from the one thing he loves, and he joins this team. Like I said, there is a lot of hype surrounding this book, but I have very mixed feelings on it. The book is a lot darker than I initially thought it was. It definitely tries to cover a lot of darker topics, but I don't think it was necessarily done in the best way. This is a very character-driven book, and I will admit I did fall for a couple of them, but I think that the plot lacked a bit because it was so character-driven. I think that the book started off very slow, and it took a very long time for me to actually want to continue to read it. Most of the time I was just kind of confused with what was going on, so I'm still not 100% invested in this story. The characters are all very complex, and I'm definitely intrigued to see how they develop in the next book. I heard that the book was very gay, so have not really noticed that yet, but you can see little hints that it's gonna happen, so I'm excited about that. I definitely think I'll end up liking this series as it goes on, so I'm definitely gonna pick up the second book, which is on my TBR for next month, so stay tuned for that. My mom actually picked it again, obviously, but she picked that book, so we're gonna read it. The next book I have, I really enjoyed. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It is The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. This takes place in The Kingdom, which is an immersive fantasy-based theme park that guests go in order to make their most magical dreams come true. Anna is one of the seven fantasists who are basically robotic princesses. Their sole purpose at this amusement park is to make the guests happy. One day, Anna meets one of the park employees named Owen, and she starts to feel love, which is an emotion she was not programmed to feel. So when Owen is murdered, Anna becomes the number one suspect for this case, and a trial begins. I was a huge fan of the format of this book. It's told in both present and past timelines, but it also has a lot of mixed media. It has trial transcripts, emails, text messages, photos, video files from the investigation, which I thought was a really cool concept to include. Half the time during the snippets of information you're given, you have no idea what's going on, but it is so much fun trying to figure it out. <laughs> I really loved watching Anna grow and develop as the story progressed. She went from being very naive to being very, very self-aware. It was great to watch her start to question her own humanity, but also the actions of those around her. I have very mixed feelings towards Owen. At times, I really liked his character and what he was doing, but then other times, I was very frustrated with his actions. I really liked the other fantasists. I think that Nia and Eve's plot lines were very interesting and engaging. I wanted to know more about them. I really wanted to know why they chose what they were doing and where their actions would lead them in the end. I really liked the idea of the kingdom and its futuristic elements. I did find the book to be a little bit predictable. I was able to figure out a lot of what was going to happen. I did figure out the ending, but I still really enjoyed it. It definitely is left on a cliffhanger, but it's apparently a standalone, but I really hope that it's not a standalone and the author decides to write more in this world. We'll see if that happens, but like I said, 4.5 out of 5 stars. I definitely recommend y'all check this one out. And then the final book that I have for part one of this wrap-up is Temper by Lane Fargo, and I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars. It was so addictive, and I am such a huge fan of this book right now. It follows a struggling actress named Kira who decides to audition for a theater company based out of Chicago run by Joanne Coulier and Malcolm Mercer. Malcolm Mercer is the director as well as the lead actor in every production they have ever put forth and he also has a very interesting reputation where he uses very questionable tactics in order to break down his actors in order to produce the best show possible. When Kira is cast as the other leading actor in the play that they are putting on called Tempers, she believes that she is going to be able to handle anything Malcolm throws her way. Honestly, the less you know about this book going into it, the better. If I could explain this book in like a meme. It would be the meme of Charlie Day 
trying to like piece together his investigation. I'll insert it here but y'all know what I'm talking about. It, it has so many layers and half the time I was like what the hell is happening but in the end it all comes together so perfectly that you're just like how did the author do that? Right from the very first page I was instantly hooked onto this story and I wanted to know more about the characters. It's told in dual perspective between Kira and Joanna and they both have a very distinct voice. With multiple perspective books I usually find myself leaning towards one or the other narrator but with this I was equally invested in both characters. I just wanted to know more about both characters. I wanted to know how everybody was somehow connected with each other. Like, it was insane how these people were connected. Again, Charlie Day, man. Charlie Day. I absolutely loved the tension between Kira and Malcolm, both on and off the stage. You knew that at some point one of them was gonna have to snap, and it was just so addictive to read. I was also a huge fan of the supporting characters in this book, especially Kira's roommate and best friend Spence. I thought he was a great addition to the story. I think that Malcolm was a really good villain. Even though he's terrible, you couldn't help but being drawn to him and like wanting the best for him, which like sociopaths, that's how it is, but he was such a good sociopath. The book is definitely very slow burn. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. There were just such small unveils throughout the entire thing that ultimately pieced together to create the big story. But it was insane how this author was able to do that. I really loved finding little tidbits of information that seemed like throwaway comments, but then were a huge major plot line in the book. I just thought it was so interesting how it all fit together. This definitely does not feel like a debut novel. Like, I'm shocked that it is their first book. I'm definitely going to be checking out more of this author once they release more things because I'm a big fan now. Autobuy author 100%. Definitely recommend you guys check it out. Five out of five stars. All right, guys, so that was a pretty rambly, supposed to be short wrap up part one for May 2019. Part two will be up shortly. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!